Hi teachers, in this video we are going to be walking through how to access code.org and set up code.org for your students. The really cool thing is, is there are now features that let you integrate with Google Classroom so you no longer have to have students manually join your class. In order to get started, we're going to go to code.org and select sign in. And if you um, don't already have an account set up with Google, you want to just con click the continue with Google button. If you already have an account set up, you can still click continue with Google and make sure that you're logging in through Google. So once you're in there, we're going to allow it to view our Google Classroom rosters. And then we're going to scroll down to the section where we can add a new classroom section and you're going to click create a section and then underneath here select that you want to do this through Google Classroom and then you'll just want to locate your course on the list. You may have a lot of different courses there depending on how many things you might be joined to. So I just wanted to add my NOCS template course, I'm going to click choose section. And then once you get this, you will have your grade come up and you'll select the grade for this course. And then here's where you'll want to select the letter course or the other course that you want them to begin with. And we're going to take a look at Code.org courses. We're going to look at the overview of the courses in code.org. So we have the elementary courses are the CS fundamentals or these down here, the express. I would suggest doing the CS fundamentals and then middle school CS discoveries and high school CS principles. If we're going into the CS fundamentals course and we click learn more, You'll notice that the CS Fundamentals is mapped up in grade level. So we have kindergarten all the way up to fifth grade. Do keep in mind that these courses are built so that a second grader can begin course C without having done course A and B. Um, course C will move a little bit faster than course A and may have a little bit more vocabulary in it than course A but it's still appropriate to begin a student at course C. And you can read further information as you scroll down. You can see the course itself and any lesson plans associated with that. So once you pick a course, again, if you're starting upper elementary kids, I strongly recommend not starting them at course A because it is pre-primer and it's pretty basic for that grade level. Once you have that, we're going to select the course. I do recommend just staying on the 2020 version. The lesson, lesson extras, this is completely up to you. I typically leave this on. I like the students being able to do the bonus challenges and some of the creative projects um, instead of just moving on. Pair programming, this is where students can um, work with a a classmate at, at the same computer. I typically leave this turned off. We're not sharing computers um, when we're doing these activities, but if you find that this is beneficial, you can turn this on. And then we're going to select save. From there, when students click to log in, they will go to, let me go ahead and go in as a student, they will go to code.org. You can always dump the code.org sign in page into Clever. In fact, if you're looking at using this with students, I would link to this page here that has the sign in buttons on it in Clever or in Google Classroom. This is the link that I would put. And then students would then click continue with Google, select their name, and it would automatically load their course. Now, when students go through the course, they have unplugged activities, which are activities that are about coding that don't require a computer. Typically, these activities have a lesson with them as well that the teacher can do in the classroom. If you're not using code.org in that way, I usually have students watch the video and then move on to the next activity. 
things will turn green as students progress through the course. So let's take a look back at what the teacher can see. We're going to click into our course. Here the teacher can see all of the different lessons. They can do them. They can share specific lessons directly to Google Classroom if there's something specific that they want students to work on. They can choose if certain lessons are hidden, although be careful if you are not working through this as a class and you want students to be self-paced, I do not recommend hiding anything. Now over here, the teacher can toggle between what does the view look like for the student and what does the view look like for the teacher. They can change their sections and then they can view any of the students specifically to see even more details on how the student is doing. Down at the very bottom, the teacher will notice the concept and the key as bubbles begin to get filled in and what is available in each section. Again, think about how you want to approach this with students. If you're looking to work through this with them and provide lessons along the way, they give you a lesson plan for each major lesson available. And if you need this to be a little bit more self-driven, I would leave everything visible and allow students to just log in and continue working wherever they left off.